So what do you do when you have a high PSA? Uh, is simply doing a scan enough? Uh, well, the scan not only helps men know if there's an area of aggressive cancer, it also gives you information about how big the prostate gland is. PSA mostly comes from the prostate gland, not from prostate cancer. So that, of course, confuses things, that PSA can come from both cancer and from the, the benign prostate gland. And when cancers are small, most of the PSA is going to be coming from the, the prostate gland, not from the prostate cancer itself. So the, um, uh, this ratio of prostate gland size to PSA is called PSA density. And the ratio of a, a 50 cc prostate, for example, to PSA should be about 10 to 1. So uh, a man who has a 50 cc prostate should have a PSA of around 5 or so. Uh, that uh, that would be considered normal for that uh, that individual. If a person had a large prostate, say a 100 cc prostate, a normal PSA could be around 10. So we have to stop interpreting PSA like one size fits all, uh, the threshold of two and a half or four, as if this is like the, the last word on what's an abnormality or not. Until you find out how big the prostate gland is, then you really can't interpret the PSA and you can't uh, give reasonable information about the risk of underlying prostate cancer. So the, um, so the bottom line then is when we do imaging, we not only get information about the uh, presence or absence of cancer, but we also help put the PSA in context. And uh, PSA has been a very useful test, but it's uh, over interpretation especially by forgetting about how much variation there is in men's prostate glands can become a real problem.